Good morning, everybody. Um, hope you're up and ready to go. I was uh, reminded Susan, Susan wanted me to share this one God story uh, this morning. Uh, it was a lesson really concerning uh, doing exactly what the Lord tells you to do, um, no matter what. And um, the scripture that it comes from um, comes from John, boy, I need my glasses, John 5, uh, starting in verse 19. Thank you. My wife just handed me my glasses. Uh, and it's terrible when you have to start wearing glasses. Oh, there we go. John 5, verse uh, 19, it says, Most surely I say to you, the Son of the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son do also does in like manner. And uh, that was one of the main things or the first thing that the Lord taught me uh, is obeying everything that he says and everything he does in detail. If I saw him doing something in a vision, I'd do it uh, in detail. If I heard him say something, uh, I would do it in detail. And uh, this story really convicted me of a lot of things. And it also showed me how detailed Jesus was even with his father. So uh, this happened actually the same time. This story actually happened the same time that I had to stop at the rest area. This was before the rest area. I, before I stopped at the rest area to pray, I had spent the night in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, I was coming back home. And uh, as I was coming through Jacksonville, Florida, uh, coming back from a tournament, I was driving through there, and the Lord said, uh, let's go to, I think it was the Days Inn uh, on Jack's Beach. And I didn't know where the Days Inn was, and... We didn't have GPS back then, nor did we have the phones that we have. So I had to ask him, you know, how do you get there? And he started telling me, he started telling me what exit to take. Because I had forgotten, I, I, I lived there at one time years prior, a long time ago, when I was younger. But of course, I, I couldn't remember how to get to the area that he was talking about, nor did I know where that hotel was. But I knew it was on the beach because he had told me. So he told me what exit uh, to take. And sure enough, there was the exit. And then told me what street to turn on. And, and I turned on that street. And after a few turns, there I am looking at the, uh, the Days Inn sign. And uh, I get out of my car. And I go in and check into the hotel. And... and uh, I put all my stuff down. I even turned on some worship music and the presence of the Lord was there. Uh, he did not show up yet physically. And I was really, you know, waiting for him to, to show up, but, uh, he hadn't showed up yet, but I could feel his presence. And he asked me to go outside and walk on the beach. And so I went out on the beach and I started walking and one of the things he shared with me was he asked me, he, he told me to look down as I was walking on the beach next to the water. And he said, look down at the sand. And so I was looking down at the sand as I was walking. And I don't know if you've ever done this, but when you're walking in the water and on the beach and you, the water washes over your feet and then back out again, if you, if you keep your, your eyes down on the sand, it feels like the ground moves when it goes back out, you know, and you get a little bit uh, unbalanced, feel a little bit dizzy, and it feels like you're moving. And uh, he said, uh, if you keep your head down, uh, he said, you'll always be a double-minded man. He said, but if you'll keep your eyes up, he said, look up. So I looked up, and I saw the sky. I saw the stars starting to appear in the sky and, and everything was sustained by his word. Everything was 
settled. There wasn't much movement there. And uh, I realized that he was trying to teach me that if I keep my mind on those things that are beneath, which are those things here on the earth, it gets a little bit unsettled and you become a double-minded man. Uh, you, you start looking at those things around you and it's never going to be always, it's never going to be settled. It's like the sands of the sea. It's always shifting. And when the water comes up, it washes it out. And I definitely didn't want to be like that. And, and I knew if I kept my mind on those things above, which, which was looking up in the sky, keeping those, my mind on those things that are always uh, settled and had foundation to them that, that were his word, I would always walk a straight path. And of course, you got to understand back then, you know, I didn't know the scriptures as much as I do now. And so I, I asked him, I said, because you know, I was getting so much revelation about keeping your mind on those things above and keeping your mind on him that uh, I got so excited, I ran, wanted to run to the hotel room. I said, can I go write these things down? And he said, go ahead. So I, I ran to the, back to my hotel room, and my hotel room was right on the beach. And I opened a sliding glass door, went in, grabbed my notebook, of course, I had bought a notebook by then. Sorry, I need some coffee. Uh, I, I bought a notebook by then and I started writing it down. And so uh, as I was writing it down, Jesus walks in. And of course, again, uh, I fell out on the, the floor because your your body just can't handle when he personally comes like that. And uh, can you get me a piece of Kleenex? My, my nose is, I've got more allergies going on this morning. But uh, I fell out on the floor and of course again, he came over and touched me and, and uh, I had the strength to get up. And I, thank you. And I sat down, I sat down, back it down on the bed and he continued to talk to me just as he was when he was talking to me when he wasn't there. Same voice, everything. It's just, he was just physically there, which that tells you a lot of things. But uh, so he, as he started talking to me about these things, he was leading me into scripture. Of course, I was having to look them up in the index, the chapters and so forth and Colossians and and uh, he would give me time. He had so much patience, you know, while I'm sitting there trying to look up scripture while the scripture is actually talking to me, you know, in person. But uh, I'm just amazed how much patience he has with us. Uh, I can't imagine how brilliant he is, you know, but he holds all that back just so that you can learn. He could give it all to you at one time, but if he did that, you really, you really wouldn't learn from it. You have to, you know, it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. It's it's in the journey of searching it out is how you learn. And uh, so as he's sitting there talking to me, I've got the, the sliding glass door open and uh, to the beach. We've got the wind going. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever stayed on the beach in a hotel, but if you're on the bottom and serve, uh, with some hotels, you, you've got a little patio. Then you've got these little concrete walls that separate you from the next room, from the outside. And I'm sitting there listening to him and uh, writing these things down. And I see something out of the corner of my eye that uh, it peeks its head around the wall there, uh, looking at me as the Lord's talking. And I'm a little bit distracted, so I just I kind of look over and I'm trying to stay focused on the Lord. And I look over and whatever this thing is, he is eating up my... He loves eating up my bag here. My bulldog is here. And every time I start this thing, he likes to distract me and eat up my things. So, uh, look, here he is. Look at this. Say good morning. Can you say good morning? Huh? <laughs> so, anyway... So anyway, I was uh, 
distracted and like this dog. And, and so, uh, I tried to stay focused on the Lord and I got my mind back on him and the Lord. Oh, there we go. Had a bad connection. Uh, the Lord was continuing to talk, uh, as I was being distracted and, uh, and I, would, I said, hold on, hold on, Lord, what did you just say? And and he, he would stop for a minute, and he'd just kind of smile, and then he would back up a few sentences and start to talk, which, of course, now, I mean, I was young and stupid. Uh, I didn't really consider that I was telling my king to stop or back up because I missed something that he, you know, had shared. Uh, later on, I felt like an idiot when I rehashed all of that. And so he backed up, started talking, and as he was talking, that that thing or someone looked around the the uh, wall again as I'm talking, and, and I looked over, and he's still talking. Finally, it just irritated me, and uh, it distracted me so much that I I looked at the Lord and I said, "Hold on, just a second, Lord." And you know, I was in the presence of a king, so I, I felt like. You know, I was Superman. I felt like I could do anything. And uh, I put my pad down, and the Lord didn't say a word. He just looked at me as though he didn't know what I was doing. Of course, he didn't know what I was doing, but you'd have to understand how pure his eyes are <laughs> and when he looks at you. And uh, I went outside, and I went around that little wall. I knew nobody was staying there. And... Uh, I went around that wall and there was a, a demonic entity standing there that had been looking around the corner and, and lift, trying to listen to us, I thought. And uh, when I saw him standing there, I just, I had so much boldness on him. I said, uh, I said, you've got to go. Me and the Lord's uh, sitting here talking. You know, you've got to leave now. And he snorted at me. And then disappeared just right in front of my eyes. And it didn't bother me a bit. I just walked back around, sat down, grabbed my pen and paper, and I looked at the Lord. I said, okay, you go ahead. And the Lord looked at me with these uh, very patient eyes. And he looked at me and said, he said, did you see me get up? And man, when he said that, I can't tell you the conviction that I had when he said, did you see me get up? Just as calm and and just collective. And I said, no. I just bowed my head and I said, no, Lord, I did not. He said, things of that, distractions of that can get you killed in the coming days. Because if you don't do what I'm doing, and what I see the Father doing even now, if you don't watch me, he said, distractions can get you killed. And uh, that has made, meant so much to me because it's not just get you killed in the future, but it's also, it drains you each day. It causes a death even in you each day when you pay more attention to the world than to the Lord. Because the Lord is always talking, you know, and uh, I was missing out. I was telling the Lord even to be quiet so I could basically be distracted by the enemy. And that's what happens when you're distracted by the enemy. You're basically shutting down that realm of hearing the Lord. When you're distracted by the, these, the world and, and the cares of this world, it chokes out the word of God. It chokes out all the seeds. It chokes out the seeds that he's trying to plant in you. And uh, and if you walk around distracted and have the cares of this world, you'll find yourself slowly dying. And uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot with that thing. I still do it today. I still remember that that experience because there's so many things that are peeking around your corner that are trying to distract us today while the Lord is trying to talk to us today. And if we would just put our minds on him instead of our minds on the world, 
we might could get some things done because there's there's not really only one way to be able to beat the enemy and that's releasing the kingdom of God. And you can't release the kingdom of God by focusing on the enemy. You have to actually focus on the Lord because he, are, he is our resource. He is our power. Now, there are times where we think we're doing something and when we're not focusing on the Lord and you and you're really thinking you're binding something when the Lord hasn't told you to do anything about it, and it, and you feel this huge rush, and you call it the anointing, we, or we call it the anointing, but uh, most of the time it's just our own adrenaline. Because when the Lord tells you to do something, you you don't have to, you don't have to get excited or try to muster some kind of voice or muster some kind of energy to do it, because if it's the Lord's will, there's rest in it. You're, there's not going to be uh, the type of energy, the type of things that are that we muster up. It, it's going to be uh, it's going to have peace on it because it's the God of peace that crushes Satan. And when man, when the Lord starts speaking to you about things to do or things to take care of, man, you you don't have to worry about you know not having the power. You know you have the power. Now I know when we're walking in this stuff, sometimes you after he tells you to do something, you know, your own fear rises up wondering if it's going to happen and I wonder if this is going to happen. And But really, his it's his word that's actually bringing that fear up to deliver you. It's not about if it's going to happen or not. What you're feeling is when he tells you something to do, it's delivering you of a certain fear that keeps you from walking with the Lord's word. And you're feeling more deliverance than the doubt and the fear. You're feeling that fear come up so that you can be free. And when you start doing God's word, it seals off and cuts out all that fear that you had before. And it's amazing. It's amazing if you if you just walk out God's word and obey God's word, it will totally reform and transform your mind and renew your mind into the mind of Christ. And really, that's one of the areas I was missing out in. I was missing out getting more renewed and missing out getting my mind renewed and transformed by the Lord by going on, going over and being distracted by the enemy and gazing upon the enemy, even though I had a word and I thought I had a word and I, and I said, you've got to get out of here. And I had such boldness. The trick was him not, he wasn't trying to listen. The trick was he was trying to get me to behold the enemy's uh, plan or to behold the enemy. Even though I had all this energy, you know, and thought I had all the authority in the world, uh, the trick was for me to get myself to behold him. And if I behold him, then I start transforming into that image. And man, it was a trick. And when I got back, you know, I sat down and said, okay, Lord, you go ahead. Uh, I was basically trying, I was basically for just a moment had transformed like them because I'd come back and I was telling the Lord what to do. You know, it made me feel like, you know, I could tell the Lord what to do and when to do it. And I had, you know, was basically becoming my own God and telling the Lord what to do. And man, the Lord had so much patience to teach me that. And uh, it it really taught me a real lesson. Now, I know some of you guys out there that have been around me, you know, there are times where I've had people ask me questions and, and a ton of questions, and sometimes I just don't answer them. Sometimes I may say something, just one-liners or something like that. But you can feel, I can feel the pull of uh, people wanting me to share even more or, or wanting to, me to elaborate on things and so forth. And I can feel that thing trying to get me out of what God wants to say at times. And I will not do it. Because if I'm pulled by even the the expectations of man, I'm beholding the enemy again. Instead of really keeping my mind on him and those things above. If I don't keep my mind on him, I can't be transformed and I can't be an ambassador of Christ in that area without it. I'll, if I'm choose to, to, uh, to pay attention to the cares of this world and the expectations of man, then I'm just going to look at man. I'll look at the area of the enemy and, uh, 
I'll end up conforming back to that image. And I do not want to do that. And neither do you. I know we we all want to be transformed and renewed. So uh, just remember, you know, keep your mind on those things above. Keep your mind on the Lord. I don't care what you see out of the side of your eye. I don't care what you see, you know, or hear. You know, maybe you hear chatter today. Maybe you hear ac accusations and Maybe you hear something that's really distracting you. Maybe you're, maybe you're even your own hard work is distracting you. And man, the, the enemy will use everything to peek his head around the corner to keep you distracted from really focusing on the Lord and what he wants to do. Because if you start hearing and you start putting your ears and your mind focusing on the Lord, we're going to destroy him. We will destroy him by, re by releasing the kingdom. And it will be the kingdom that will bind the enemy. Man, we need that. I, I was, I'm, I'm tired of us trying to bind him by, by ourselves. We need God's authority. We need his authority and uh, his anointing. We need his commandments. We need to do what he tells us. I mean, it says here, even the son could do nothing of himself. So that says a lot, that he could not even do it unless his father was doing it. That's what makes it so powerful. And I often wondered why he would, you know, walk in such peace in certain areas and do miracles and so forth. Uh, it's because he, he gazed upon peace. He gazed upon his father. And when you do that, you release peace upon people in this world and you start becoming peace on the earth as it is in heaven. So uh, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Even when the Lord tells you something to do, you know you've got a mandate. That mandate becomes the Lord. You have got to focus on it because that is the Lord's commandment. And when the Lord gives you a commandment, that word is him. And man, I don't know about you guys. Every time you get something where the Lord gives you something to do, uh, Man, the next day or almost immediately, you think, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. Man, I got to finish this and I got to finish that. All this stuff comes to try to distract you from focusing on what God's told you to do. And uh, the enemy knows. All he's got to do is distract us. He doesn't have to just hit you and try to curse you. Just his distractions is enough for us right now. Much less all the hits, you know, that you take. But uh, even the Lord stayed focused while he was getting hit. Think about that. He went through the cross. He went through crucifixion. And he stayed focused on his father. That's what helped him get there. He focused on getting there. If he hadn't have done that, there's no way he could have made it. He had to stay in that realm of his father. He had to keep his mind on those things above. And man, they were beating him. The pain was in, going through his body. But... They couldn't kill that focus. They couldn't kill that love that he had for the Father. And it got him there. So uh, stay focused. Stay focused on the Lord. Oh, Donna. Hey, Donna. You, uh, you just said, how do you sow in our ministry? Oh, we have a website at uh, www.livingvineministries.org. You can do it there. But... Uh, Anyway, focus on the Lord, guys. If there's any time to stay focused right now, is is now during this age. We've got to get to that place to where we, we love the Lord much more than our distractions. And that's really what boils down to it. Where is our love? Is our love toward the Lord completely where the Lord is the one that's distracting us from the, from the world? That's where I want to get. I want to get to where... The Lord is such a distraction to me that it's distracting me from the world. And I find myself getting caught up instead of caught down. I want to know those things that are from above, not the things that are beneath and sensual. Have adrenaline instead of really the Lord. So let's go for it. Let's really go for it. Go for it today. Go for it tomorrow. Go for it forever. I'd like to be so focused on the Lord that if, when I die, when I leave this world, I still just see him. I don't even see anything else around me. I just see the Lord. And when I walk up, it's like we'd never missed a beat. 
That's what, that's what I want. I know that's what a lot of us want. And we walk in to that next realm. We have had already been there. So anyway, uh, we love you guys. Matthew, love you down there, Gulf Shores. Thank you for the birthday wish. Uh, we love you, man. You said you was going to come see us. You got to come see us. We've got to beat you up here too. All right, man. Well, I love you guys. Thanks for joining in on, on God stories. Uh, this is, I think, number seven. But I hope it came out okay. Uh, we lost connection for a minute, but we came back, uh, back online. But uh, keep going after the Lord. If you've, listen, if you've fallen, if you've, if you have been distracted, hey, that's why we have Jesus. Just like Jesus did with me. He has patience. You got to turn back to him. Get back to your focus. If you got distracted, hey, turn back. A lot of people get distracted and just say, well, I've already missed it. I might as well, you know, do this. And that's a lie too. You can get back up. If you get distracted from the Lord, you don't realize you've fallen. That's a fall. Get back up. It says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. That's the difference. And I'd much rather trust those that are getting back up than, you know, some that think that they're perfect. But uh, love you guys. And Lord, I just thank you for this day. I just ask that you help us all get focused. Every one of us, Lord. That we would focus on you. Show us what you're wanting us to do. Lord, we don't want to hear the voices of this world. We want to hear your voice in heaven. We love you, Lord. All right, guys. Y'all take care. And I'll see you next Tuesday on the God stories. I think it'd be number eight. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.